to actually take a, um, another segment here that I have prepared for you all uh, based on a recent uh, book that I had uh, been assigned to read in the class I was taking at AGTS with Dr. Carol Tennant. Uh, the, 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 cl the class was Renewing the Spiritual Leader. We had a lot, a lot of reading, but this is one of the books that, I, that impacted me. Um, and actually, uh, I finished that class saying, I want to do what this book says more. Um, I, I want to take uh, the concept of this book and put it into practice. And I'm I want to share it with you because I feel like when we're talking about discipleship, um, we're talking about uh, basically tra transfer of life. Uh, we're talking about being able to speak into somebody else and take it to another level where it's not just teaching them uh, Bible, uh, scripture, teaching them what the Bible says, but actually teaching them how to obey the scripture, how to live out the scripture. And, and that basically means that the leader has to be a person that is having deep encounters with God. Um, and I think that one of the things that, that I think all of us have experienced in that is that often the leadership responsibility, uh, and when it gets heavy on your life, and you do it as a pastor, you do it as a leader, you, you have a tendency to sometimes find that your intimacy with God uh, becomes less because you have so many activities to do. You're trying to accomplish so much. And so often sometimes devotional time is a rush through. You know, I got, I got to read some scripture, I've got to pray, but we're really not taking the time to allow our own personal development. And I really believe that that could even be the key to uh, better discipleship because discipleship, if it was just teaching, we don't lack teaching, we don't lack people having access to the very best Bible teaching there is. And, and if they don't like our church, they just have to go online and listen to, uh, you know, and it's even, I even say this right now, uh, you know, our people are, uh, you know, because of COVID, life has gotten simpler. We're doing simple church, nothing fancy, just a sermon on Facebook or on YouTube. But then, you know, now people are finding everybody preaching, every preacher out there, even, uh, even the ones that have great reputations for their ability to speak, to expound scripture. But that doesn't mean that because you're learning something from somebody that you are being uh, discipled or, or spiritually formed. And so what I want to do is just, I want us to go to the, 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 the purpose of the, basically the, the premise of the book is two rooms. And uh, the basic is that there's a soul room and a leadership room. Both of them are important, but I think in, in many cases, and if I were to change this, I'd say the discipleship room and the soul room. The discipleship room is where I'm learning. I'm learning, uh, you know, what I'm, I'm learning how to follow Jesus. But the reality is in the leadership room, uh, we, we, have, we have seen a whole lot of focus on leadership. I almost wonder sometimes if we're almost tired of reading leadership books. Uh, but the soul room is really the area where God, where we encounter God, and we allow God to speak to us. And so his point in the book is that we, we have to be a, a, a person that is spending lots of time allowing God to basically minister to our soul. Um, one of the things that I guess I am discovering is that the depth of a person's soul. You know, the Bible, when you read the Psalms, you talk about the deep that calls unto deep. There's a depth to every one of us. There, there is no, I mean, in fact, it's, it's, it's because, because it's, it's in our soul that we encounter God, then our soul must have a vastness to it. I mean, how could my soul uh, find such delight or, or, or experience God, the knowledge of God, the knowledge of who he is, and delight myself in God, but it's in the soul room. So if, if a leader is not spending time in the soul room, then he will become um, a, a leader that basically is not imparting the very life of God. And one of the points that, that uh, Dr. Miller makes in his book is that this is one of those come to Jesus type of, of uh, the soul room is the come to Jesus. It's the, it's the Matthew 11, and I, excuse me, Matthew, yeah, Matthew 11, uh, verse 20, uh, 28 and 29. 
Jesus said, come to me, and I know you've all read this, but it says, come to me, all you who are weary and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Uh, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. If you really think about it, I mean, Jesus really, and I think Brother Choke uh, actually was, was focused on that. Jesus was inviting people to him. He was inviting them to come and follow him, to actually learn from him, learn his life, imitate him. Uh, and I think Brother Choco brought that out, the fact that, that the disciples really wanted to be like him. So in essence, what, 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 what the focus of this book, and I would encourage you, this book, you can buy, you can buy this book for eight bucks uh, as an ebook now on Amazon. And again, the name of the book is The Spiritual Formation of Leaders. But what I want to talk, I don't want to talk about the soul room and the leadership only. I want us to go to another, another important part of the time that I have here. And that is that he does mention that, that there is a, a challenge that we are facing in the church and that we're trying to develop leaders based on a model of ministry, what we've adopted as a model of ministry. And models of ministry, um, you know, there are dozens and dozens of models of ministry. In fact, m most of us have gone to seminar after seminar. And I say this when I used to be a pastor. Uh, I used to think, to, I think, I look back and I said, what did I put my poor people through? Every time I would go to a, a new seminar to learn a new model of doing church or ministry, to come back and change everything. And so all of a sudden, it, it was kind of like we were barely learning one thing and now we're learning another thing. Um, sometimes I think what was happening is we thought that possibly if we could find the right model, it will change everybody, it will change people. But I think most of us realize that I think that if you've been in the ministry a long time, you'll notice that every, every ministry, every model of ministry has a shelf life. Uh, in fact, I can think about the fact, you know that just two weeks ago, I gave away eight boxes of books to a ministry, and they're good books, great books. I almost hated to get rid of them, but I just didn't have room on my shelf now that we've moved, and my wife reminded me that I had made a commitment that I was not going to fill up uh, my office like I had before. So I gave away all these books that I had spent good money on, and most of them had to do with models of ministry, and, and now they, I was just giving it away. Um, in fact, I can think of some of those. Uh, Dr. Miller mentioned some, some books, and, and, and you, you, this will date you. Uh, all of us are at least of the right age. Uh, I remember reading Ray Stedman's book called Body Life. It was all about how to do life together. Now that book ought to come back. In fact, that book was written in the 70s, I think, it ought to come back. Evangelism Explosion by, by James Kennedy. Read the book, bought the book. Uh, Bill Hybels, I didn't buy his book. I, I, I wasn't 100% sold on secret sensitive, sensitive model, but everybody bought his book and everybody was paying attention to Bill Hybels because he built a huge church. Peter Wagner, Spiritual Gifts, bought the book. It was all about spiritual gifts. And then Rick Warren, Saddleback. The Purpose Driven Church, The Purpose Driven Life. By the way, I think most of you know this, Rick Warren's book has sold more books than any other book except the Bible. And uh, because it was such, it had a long life, but right now, most people don't even do Purpose Driven Life anymore. And, and then finally, if you're AG, you did We Build People. And, and I'm not, forgive me, I'm not being sacrilegious here, I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but even Acts 2 is going to have a shelf life. Brother Jonathan, I love you, my brother. Acts 2 is great. And I think it's, it's got a long ways to go. And I, I, don't, I don't speak negatively about it, but every model has a shelf life. And, and I think one of the reasons for that is because most of the time, ministry models are created in a church need, where there's a moment of need, or in a crisis like COVID-19. A lot of stuff that we're maybe creating for, during COVID 
will have a shelf life. It will be good for a while and then it will, will go away. A lot of, a lot of uh, models change because the culture shifts. A lot of them change because the demographics shift. A lot of them change because the pastor changes. You change pastors and he brings a whole new ministry model to the church. So the, the point of what I guess that he's trying to make in his book is ministry models are really not the way to develop leaders or disciples. They're good tools. They're good, they're good tools for the season. They meet needs. But the long, the, for the long term, it's really about the, the, the process, a biblical process whereby God shapes people. Now, now let, me just, let me just walk real quickly through the six, uh, and then I'll just kind of leave that as kind of something for you to think about. Observation A is, a, a model presents a product, but the biblical process presents a path Amen. for people. So the product has a shelf life. The path is for, for a lifetime. Number two, um, but, well, let me just say this. In the, the biblical process of leadership, the specific uh, outcome is unknown. It's prayed for, dreamed of, and often un 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 unquantifiable but the ministry model does have an outcome, and many times we are defined by whether or not we can reach that outcome. Observation number two, a model arises from a situation and provides a sense of closure. Basically, we had a need, and in order to accomplish the goal, we created this model, and it works, but then it ultimately has a shelf life, it will finally be, something else will replace it at some point uh, in time. It's a, usually a toolkit. It's a, it's a come and learn. Uh, while the process is more of a come and see or experience God. And so what is happening is if, if we're not producing people that are having their personal encounter with God, then often sometimes they're walk with God ends at the end of the model. Whatever they were doing, that's where it ends. Number three, a model draws attention to itself saying, look at it, but the, the uh, process draws attention to God and says, look to him. And so that's that, look at number four, models run their course, but a biblical process is ongoing. It's uh, the, the models have a season, but a biblical process will actually be uh, not only ongoing, but it will actually transfer one person to another because they disciple, they pour into somebody. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an experience, an encounter with God. Number five, models say follow it. The biblical process says from Jesus, come and follow me. And then number six, models tend to focus on the management or management, but a biblical process acknowledges the mystery, the mystery of the encounter with God, the mystery of the unknown, the, 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 the pursuit that doesn't end. While maybe this particular model of, of doing things has, will end um, and we'll move on to something else. And it doesn't mean uh, that we've sinned because we did that. And I just want to close by saying, and I have all of these notes, I found something interesting, and it was called the 27, the 27 uh, advantages to uh, ministry expiration. And it basically describes the fact that it's okay to let some things die. They have a purpose, they'll come, they'll go, but the, the, the process of God developing, your, your pursuit of God, your time with God, that is lifetime. And I wonder if, if we focus more on helping people come to that experience, we would produce greater disciples. Um, at least that is my, that is my, I want to share that with you. And um, we'll share, I can share, I have a lot more to share with you on this, but basically we have just a short moment here this morning. So um, I don't know if there's any questions or thoughts because I need to pass this on to Ellie at this time, but any thoughts, any ideas uh, about ministry, model, shelf life? 
If you have not gotten this book, I, I started reading it on Dennis's recommendation. I think it really warrants a great read uh, because it, it kind of opens our eyes. Uh, like Dennis said, I think sometimes we focus on leadership, but not on the model of discipleship, which transcends times and periods, but those biblical principles stay the same and can be contextualized wherever you are in the world, because there will always be uh, the ultimate rabbi, Jesus, that we're learning from. Amen. And um, we, obviously, after Pastor Chokel spoke to us, have a new uh, commitment uh, that we are resolved to take others under our wing. So any questions? So Jonathan, yes, go ahead, bro. I just want to defend at the oxy journey. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah, yeah, that's that's our baby. Yeah. Uh, no, 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 no. It's the, it's the accord, brother. I'm with you on that one. I'm not, <laughs> no, I'm no, not, no, no. You know. What I, I can got, I say? It's a biblical <laughs> template. It is not a program, so that will stand the test of time because Scripture stands the test of time. There's the defense, Jonathan. <laughs> Jonathan, babies, ba Jonathan, I, 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 babies grow up, get old, and die. I know. I got your point, brother Dennis, and I, I really, I really appreciate it because uh, it's true. And um, the other hand, is uh, I think most of our mistakes um, as pastors and leaders is is what you said uh, at the beginning of your speaking was is uh, changing from one model to another model and teaching our people. Uh, they they hadn't finished uh, uh, finishing learning something when we are taking them to something new. Uh, but uh, at the same time, I, did, I think it is important both models and, uh, and, uh, and, and, uh, and personal discipleship. And, and, and I, I believe that uh, having something to offer to churches and pastors and leaders uh, as, a, as an alternative from the Assemblies of God, because there, there is hundreds of, of um, models and, and uh, and discipleship programs. I think it is very important for us to understand that uh, we we need to uh, give them uh, an an offer that would include would include both the alternative, uh, not not to choose this or this, but to say the, we have this and this. Um, that's that's and, and, brother Jonathan, uh, that, and I think that's the point of the soul room and the leadership room. We could call it the soul room and the discipleship room, um, because in re in reality, is is that if any program, any model that is pushing people towards a deeper encounter with God, that model is absolutely good. Um, it's it's. I mean, in other words, it's kind of like if this model stops, your relationship with God goes on. And that's what we, we hope would ultimately be, be the end the end right there. So um, I'm not trying to, you know, so so with all respect to Acts 2, <laughs> we love it. It's got a long ways to go, brother. And it's and and we're with you. Amen.